Okay, so these, this is some early work. Okay, this is, a, this is a nice moment for me personally. So this is a work by Newman. This was, I don't know why, I didn't do this on purpose, it was graphed out like this. It was just to show you things. So this is People Way on Networks in 2004, a mere 14 years ago. Um, and this is from, so, these are, so there are a couple of things. This is sort of the people who published papers that had networks in them. Um, and then this is sort of the big community structures, right? So there's this tendril one over here. It's some pretty well connected, and then the, you know, they give you a size of how many people are in them. And the actual humans involved, right? They're colored by groups again. Wow, this is a long time now, so it's interesting to look at. So I was a bridge character, actually, because here's my advisor, um, Dan Rothman, who worked with Pastor, Pastor, uh, Ramu Pastor Sotoris, who was a postdoc in our group. Uh, so he and Vespignani, who tweeted about your work just now, they wrote, they wrote the first paper that said scale-free networks uh, have zero, a vanishing epidemiological threshold, meaning that stuff just spreads on them all the time. They're really bad things. They also exist. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Barabaji in here. Um, Reka Albert, right? So they're from the first, uh, they're, they're the, the scale-free paper. Gene Stanley, who has a rolling set of 30 to 40 graduate students and just thousands of papers. Thousands and thousands of papers. He's amazing. Um, very senior character uh, at BU. It's an interesting, this, this guy's done a lot of interesting stuff in linguistics. Anyway, so over here you see, like this, is now this is a whole um, crew of uh, Cornell people. So Duncan was there, here's um, Strogatz, Chris Moore, who's pretty awesome, there's Mark Newman, and then over here we've got a sort of a, a German outpost, we've got the Stefan Bornholt, other people. Michelle Gervin, who was a student of mine, well, I mean, uh, she was in one of my recitations at MIT. Yeah, wow. It's a really interesting group. Alex Arenas. Yeah. So, uh, of course, now the version of this would be insane, and there's no sort of bridge structure anymore. It's just uh, completely full. Wow. Wow. So many people. Andreas Wagner. Wow. Okay. Anyway, there you go. So. I mattered once in one paper. Um, so, uh, but it was a bridge thing. So uh, this is, um, yes, so these are more things, right? Dolphins, okay, so you, someone turns up with a social network for dolphins and you find the, you know, you go and find their modules. And, uh, this is Les, Les Miserables, this is a famous one. Uh, and this is a classic, you know, let's just take the whole thing, who appears in a scene together, and just go <laughs> and squish it together. But you'd really want the unfolding piece, right? Which we've seen the XKCD version, and then that um, work by Graf to show Princess Bride and so on. Um, but this is, you know, this is definitely something. And it can be quite revealing, right? You might, if, if you've got a really complex story, you might not actually, you know, perceive this from, from the outside. Maybe it makes sense. Okay. So lots of fun things you can do. But, you know, the where we are now is you feed your network into one of these visualizations and you press a button and it's going to create something like this. But you need to really understand what they're using, whose thing they're using. All these people fight about which method is the best. One of those people is Klaus Et, not surprisingly. <laughs> 